How's everybody? Good. Good. Man, it seems like you've uh, kind of embraced the uh, kind of being the number one guy. It feels like right now. is that like a mentality that you have right now is just trying to go out and be the guy. Well, you know, Mike's not here. You know, Trayvon's hurt. Um. Well, where you know all the injuries happening. Um, you got to go out there. The show's still going to ride, so you got to go out there um, thinking that, you know, you're going to be the number one guy. So even the younger guys, you know, when they get their chance, we're telling them, like, we're down numbers, so we need people to step up, and that's what they've been doing. That's what I've been doing. We help each other out, whether it's plays, um, splits, or anything else. So I think the receiver room has taken the next step into becoming closer, knowing we got guys now, so people have to step in and take it on a bigger role. Was uh, getting to play as much as you did last year, does that help the, the confidence to do that, you know? Right. Uh, I think so. Um, I definitely think I've grown from just being thrown in there to actually understanding it. I think I have a better understanding now, and I just take credit to all the guys because they've been pushing me ever since um, all the injuries that happened last year. So they've been pushing me, trying to help me get prepared. And it's just kind of rolled into this year. So they're still pushing me, and I kind of try to help by trying to pass on what I've learned to the young guys. How much uh, have you personally gotten to grow just by going up against like Marshawn when you're doing this one on one? Seems mm -hmm. like you guys are always kind of get matched up on each other. Right. Um, it's all about um, improvement. So um, we try to get each other better with offense and defense, and Marshawn is the perfect person to go against. So I do what I can to try to make him better, and he always gets me. My question is, what, from your vantage point, what makes Marshawn such a special corner back? Just smart. You know, he knows, he, he eliminates plays based off a lot of things. So having him, uh, I can, he talks to himself when I'm out there, well, when we're out there, and I can just, I listen to his thought process, and I was like, damn, like, I can only do so much because he knows what's coming. So I think that gives him a better advantage. I apologize. I don't think we've talked to you since you switched numbers. Um, can you? Tell oh, that was what, in the what, process of it. What's behind number one? <laughs> um, it was just a special number, you know. I was number one in high school and college, so if I was able to get a chance to have him lead, then thankfully, you know, they changed the rules. So as soon as I found out, I sent the text to coach and said, "I want the number," and um, thankfully, I got it. So I'm did, did looking you have to forward beat to anybody it. Anybody out for that? Do you know? Um. <laughs> Well, obviously, you know, Chauncey won the number one, yeah. so I thought we was going to have, like, a wide receiver DB match, but, you know, thankfully he said, you know, he wanted he stayed with 22, so that didn't happen, so it just worked out in my favor. And can you share, like, was there a, a dollar amount you had to pay to, like, buy out your jerseys or something? Not yet. They ain't told me yet, yeah. but I know it's coming, so yeah. <laughs> prepare you, for that. You've Be prepared had one for that. since when? Since high school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Do you feel like you have more downfield ability than maybe you were able to show last year? And is that something you expect to be more of this year in this offense? Um, I believe so. Whatever, really, whatever needs to be happening, you know, um, we got a great, great amount of guys. It's very versatile. Everybody does things differently, and we pick off each other. We learn from each other, and we try to add into each other's game. So, if I if I need to be the downfield threat, then that's what I'll be. If not, then we got guys who can. Is that, is that that's something you did a lot of in college, though, right? Your yards per catch in college was pretty high. I mean. Yeah, pretty much. Really, same thing in college. You know, whatever they needed, we game plan a lot of game plans. So we took advantage of everything. On the flip side, how about the red zone? We obviously saw you have a couple of nice moments with each quarterback in the red zone. A few practices back, is that been a specialty of yours, or is that something that you're hoping to get more opportunities to? Red zone, the money zone. So, you know, we work on it all the time. And anytime you get in the red zone, we want to come over with a touchdown. So, whatever it's blocking or catching, um, whatever it needs, you know, that's what we're going to try to do. They're going to put us, coach is going to put us in the best situation, and quarterback's going to do the right thing. So, all we got to do is catch the ball and make the right block. What are your impressions that Ken Crowley's on so far? Oh, Ken is great. Um, we talk all the time, like after a play or something, after a route. Um, I tell him what I'm thinking, like after the period's over, I tell him what I'm thinking. I'm sure the other guys do too. And I ask him what he's thinking, you know, why are you playing inside? Why are you over the top? Like, why did you break when I wasn't even route? And he kind of tells me the same thing like Marshawn does. They kind of eliminate things that we're doing based off our split, our alignment. 
and there's not too many routes we can do based on our split. So it's great talking to the DBs because they tell us things that work on our game. What's it sort of like just watching Deontay do what he does at his size? <laughs> People talk about his size all the time, but his his play speaks for itself. So um, little man, big spirit, you know. Uh, we, we joke about it all the time, but he's really um, a great, him and T. Lou, honestly, because they're both, I look at them sometimes, I try to, you know, but they be getting mad because they got short man <laughs> syndrome. But. Mark, Mark West, how long did it take you to feel, to really feel like you belong? Was it like right away? Was it like after you made the 53? Like, like how, how do you kind of? Mm, I think last year, you know, it, obviously, with COVID and all that, it was different for everybody. But um, not, me being new and not knowing what to expect, you know, guys used to try to help me out and tell me what to expect, but you can never really expect it until you actually get in there. So I think I think the first game that I actually played in was um, really eye-opening because, you know, first play, first time in the league, first game, it's just butterflies, you know, heart drop, stomach in. It's just a different feeling, but after I get the first play out of the way, I thought, I thought to myself, like, it's just football, you know. It's still the same play, it's still X's and O's. It's, I beat my man in front of me, so that's pretty much how I thought about it. Was Elvin one of those guys who helped you and kind of make you feel comfortable, especially since you have, you know, history there? Yeah, Alvin. I think Alvin was one of the biggest, just because you know we went to school together. But Alvin definitely was somebody who I knew I could go to. I knew he'll keep it straight with me. I knew he wouldn't lead me on any other way. So Alvin was was one of the biggest supporters I had here. And then Marquez, when did you? Get really uh, gain the confidence that the team is going to give you this opportunity this year. Um, I know they keep telling us they like their receiver depth maybe more than people do on the outside, but mm -hmm. obviously you've shown a lot of confidence that you can have a bigger role this year. When when did you kind of perceive that that's how they felt about you? Um, I think we have a, a great group of guys in the receiver room. I think um, we're very versatile, size, um, speed. Um, just what all we can do different and if coaches think that and coaches know that then I have no no doubt that we do um, I trust the guys they trust us and we just like whatever needs to be happening we're gonna get it done in the room whether we're down or whether we're not I mean that's what we um, try to get instilled into everybody that coach trusts us enough not to you know bring anybody else in so that's, that says a lot about the guys in the room. So. More questions. Is there any kind of kinship or mentality about how many of you guys are undrafted? And, and, you know, like... Oh, no. Um, Chris came up to me the other day and said he didn't know a lot of us was undrafted. I said, yeah, we pretty much the room full of undrafted. So it was good to share that moment because a lot of guys can relate to it. And I think that makes us build trust and confidence in each other because we're able to relate to each other a lot. At More questions. Point, I'm sorry, at this point, do you expect to have a, a significant role in the offense? Um, I think that we're here and we got a job to do. And if we don't do the job, then somebody else is going to get the job and do it. So I think a lot of us will step up. I think a lot of us will come in and play and do what needs to be done. Marquez, you talk about leaning on Alvin Kamara. Has Bryce Thompson leaned on you? You know, uh, mm -hmm. Tennessee guys sticking together, and, and you encourage him a great opportunity here with the Saints. Or what's what that relationship? Um, I love Brycey. Um, even though we're on different sides, even in college, we used to talk about you know why am I why am I doing this? And then I, I asked him all. I used to ask him like, why is he doing this? What's your thought process? And then we help each other on that. And then out here, you know, I just tell him keep his head up. You know, um, the more versatile you are, the more important you are. So I try to help him anytime I can, whether it's on the field, whether it's off the field. Like after a play that I've seen him done, um, when we have our break, I'll go over there and to him and say, hey, you remember they're watching, so you got to control your body language, just little small things like that. But um, I'm sure he's really grateful. I know he can rely on me. I know he can rely on Alvin, even though they don't really know each other. You know, Shy, there's a lot of Tennessee guys here. So if any place feels like home, it should be here. So. Hey, Quiz, I know he's not in the room with you all anymore, but what have you thought about Dewan Johnson's transition to tight end? 
See, man, when I first heard about it, I was hot, dog. I was like, man, my buddy left, man. I can't look across the meeting room and, you know, laugh at him whenever we get yelled at or something. But um, I think he's really transitioned well. You know, I think he was kind of down, or I think he kind of knew it was coming in the off season, and he just kind of mentally prepared himself. But he's doing great. I think he loves it now, even though he um, – I know I can tell he gets down a little bit, you know, going against some big guys. But you know, I tell him we got probably one of the best D linemen in the game. So going against them is probably just going to be easier in the game. So he embraces his role, he accepts it, and he knows what has to be done. You ever been out to eat with Juwan Johnson? I have. He's talking about how his appetite is pretty voracious. Is he? Uh, <laughs> you ever? <laughs> unless he likes to eat. He but does. He, he thought maybe tight end would suit him better anyway. Yeah, he 240, so he better it better soon. But I, like I said, I think he kind of knew it was coming, and he kind of just embraced it. But I'm trying to I told him we we gotta go out soon yeah. again. Whatever you know, like you notice, he like oh. no no even days. when we eat, even when we eat in the cafe, yeah. he be having two three plates. He made me he stole my food. We had chicken <laughs> and waffle. He stole one of my waffles after he just ate. So I was kind of hot about that. Y'all can tell him I said that. How did, how, wait, how, did he manage, how did he pull that off? No, because, see, I got my own food, right? right. And then he, we ate in a receiver room, and he already ate. And then he sat down, he was like, man, them waffles are good, though. You, you mind if I get one? I looked down, and I said, you just ate. Go ahead. Then he took my chicken, too. It's love and hate. Love and hate. But it's fine. How old did you know Alvin at Tennessee? He's a couple years ahead of you, I think. Mm -hmm. right? My freshman year was his last year. Okay. So, um, I remember. Last one, guys. I, I think it was Tennessee Tech when I was my first punt return. And, you know, he was a return at Tennessee, too. So, um, I think my first punt return I ever had at Tennessee was my freshman year against Tennessee Tech. And what happened was. The story where I got caught by the punter, but what happened where I didn't get caught, I kind of tripped and fell because I didn't see him. But they made fun of me the whole night. Like, they made fun of me that whole game. I told them, next return, like, I was going to do better. And then the next following return, I had scored on the punt return. So that was thing, I think that was the moment that me and him kind of broke even. Because after they was made fun of me and all that from the punter, I think that after I scored, I think they were so happy. I was, they was probably happier than I was. So it was just a great memory that I had of him in Tennessee. Right. Thanks, Marquez. So, well, thank y'all. Next, guys. Jaybo.